So starting with Annex 15.7, we now have first-class support for Node backend development. Now, Annex always had Node support, so we had Express.js or Nest.js, but our focus has definitely been more on the front-end side of things for Angular, React, and more. Now, with Annex 15.7, that changes. Let's have a look. So when you create a new Annex workspace, you now not only get a questions about setting up a monorepo or a React or Angular app, but there's now also a standalone server app. And so right now we support their Express, Fastify, and Koa. So let's go with Fastify for now. There's also the possibility to generate a Docker file. So let's do that right now as well. And we can obviously enable Annex Cloud also for the backend node servers. So this gives us a single project Annex workspace where we have here the source folder at the very root, which in this case hosts our Fastify application, which is what we have chosen as our framework of choice when we did set up this workspace. And so this is a backend node application and we could just run it as we are accustomed to run an Annex project. So we can just run Annex serve or just rely on the package JSON scripts which have been set up for us here. And what Annex serve does now is it just compiles it and runs it here in this case at localhost 3000. And so if you go there, we can now refresh and see here we have our messages being printed out on the browser. Now, obviously the whole thing about testing works as well. So we can just run NX test and that would run the unit tests, which obviously also works with the caching that we are accustomed to have in an NX workspace. So we never run something twice in this setup. And similarly, you can run NX build and this would then produce a disk folder output of the compiled version of our application. Now, since at the startup, we have chosen also to generate a Docker file, one has been placed here at the very root of our workspace. And so if we open it up, we can see this has been configured to just use a node LTS Alpine version. It just takes our application deer here, exports a couple of ports to the outside world, and then copies over whatever has been placed in the dist folder. To build this Docker container, we can use a target that has been set up here in our project JSON. And so if we go down here, we see the build and serve and lint steps. And further down, there's also a Docker build. Now this depends on the build step. So whenever we run this, it would first produce the disk folder output, such that we can then package it up with this simple Docker command. And so to run this, we can just run NX Docker build. And then we can just run it by using the tag that we have assigned during the build process. And so similar as before now, if we go to localhost 3000, our app runs, but is now being served over the Docker container. If you didn't opt for setting up a Docker file initially during the setup process, you can always go ahead and just generate one. So we can use the add novel node package here and run the setup Docker command. And that will give us now to choose the application that we want to have it for, obviously for the node app. And this would now go ahead and set up the Docker file for us. Now, obviously I have it already, so it just skips the whole process. Now, besides having these generators, you can obviously also use the whole concept of local libraries in NX to modularize your application. For instance, we could go ahead and just set up a new modules folder, which hosts all of our application's features. And then we can go ahead and leverage some of those generators again to set up libraries that we can then import in our application. Now I have here NX console installed, so I can just go ahead and right click and run generate, say node library. And I wanna go and create, let's say a person API endpoint. And this will go ahead and then generate that library into that modules folder, as you can see here. You can also go ahead and customize it a bit further by choosing like what type of compiler you wanna use, for instance, SWC, or how the import path in general would look like. And if you're good to go, you can just go ahead and hit run here. So once we have the library, we can now go ahead and implement, for instance, such a Fastify plugin. And this could look as follows, where we just import that Fastify plugin async behavior, we return a new route here, which means that whenever we hit that entry point of that library, it would return just a simple object here, which is our API. This is already being exposed here via the index.ts file. And so what we can do is we can just go ahead into the Fastify application and register it as another handler. Now, all of these libraries in NX are already exposed via the tsconfig path mapping. So if we go down here at the root, we see that tsconfig file. And when we generate the library, it also set up a path here, which points now to that person library that we created. And so we can use now this import path directly to pull in our API. And so what we expose here is a people endpoint. And so here we can just then go ahead and say fastify.register people where the prefix is people. 
And so if we surf this as well, we can now go to people and we would see our people API being exposed. And so you can see how you can modularize such an approach. And so this is just the first version and we have already some good improvements coming up the pipeline. For instance, right now, we always bundle everything into a single file. Now this might still be handy in terms of deploying to some edge functions where you don't necessarily want to drag ahead and with you all the node modules folders. So what you get when you build is basically a single output file, which is here our main.js file, together with the source map, of course, for debugging. And this is also especially useful because it automatically also pulls in our modules here. So we don't have to worry about setting up some linking such that our import paths that we have seen before resolve properly. In the future, we will also allow a different approach of non-bundled output, which might be useful if you deploy it inside a Docker container to something like fly.io. So definitely make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and on Twitter to not miss those updates when we ship that. See you in the next one.